Early in the morning after the concert, Wendy drank a cup of coffee, felt unwell, and fainted. Ten minutes later, she woke up in a weird basement. Four doors could lead her either to freedom or into a trap. Behind the first door, there were hungry bats. Behind the second door, there were rabid foxes. Behind the third door, there were venomous tarantulas. And behind the fourth door, there were venomous snakes. Which door should Wendy choose? She should choose the first door. Bats are nocturnal animals. They sleep in the morning. Next day, Wendy received a task from Shelly. She was the owner of a small art store and needed help with sorting paints by color. Unfortunately, Shelly's cat mixed them all up. Can you see any odd color among all these paints? Here it is. What about these tubes? Are they all similar? Nope. Paints number 2 and 6 are different. Can you help Wendy spot the odd color here? Paint number 1 is a little darker than the rest. What about this box? These colors are the same. Take a look inside this box. Are there any paints that don't belong here? Well, this color is slightly different. What about these paints? Are they all the same? Nope. Paints number 1 and 2 are different. And finally, this box. Can you see the paint that doesn't belong? Tube number 8 looks different. Wendy got a job as a supermarket manager. She assigned night shifts to Vicky and Fiona. They had to restock food at a 24-hour supermarket at the mall. At first, the girls were afraid to go through the dark and empty mall to get to the supermarket. But they got used to it after a while. Once, Wendy came over at 3 a.m. to check on them. She found the cash register open and empty. Wendy asked the two girls only one question. What were you doing when the robbery took place? Vicky said, The shelves with chips were almost empty, so I went to the warehouse to get some more. But someone had rearranged all the boxes. I had to look for the right one for about 15 minutes. When I came back, the money was already gone. Fiona said, I had already finished restocking my section, so I decided to go and do a little shopping in the mall. I didn't know what happened while I was away. Can you guess who the thief is? Fiona. The robbery happened at night. All the other shops were closed. How could she go shopping? When Fiona got exposed, she ran away from the supermarket. Wendy decided to carry out her own investigation. It turned out that Fiona had four friends. Wendy was sure that Fiona was hiding in one of their houses. Since Wendy didn't work for the police, she couldn't get a search warrant and visit them. But she could examine the guy's Instagram accounts. Let's look through their fresh posts. Have you guessed who's hiding Fiona? This guy is not alone. Take a look at this hand over there. Do you recognize Fiona's nail polish? Gotcha! Wendy received a bonus from the supermarket owner for her help in catching the criminal. Now she can afford to go to Asia. 
solve this puzzle to find out which country she's going to visit first. That's right, it's China! And which country is she going to visit after traveling around China? Japan. And where will Wendy fly after that? To Singapore. Great job! Wendy arrived at the airport. Suddenly, airport guards locked the doors and she heard an announcement. Attention all passengers! A dangerous criminal has escaped and is hiding inside the building. Please keep calm and be careful. The airport will resume its operations as soon as we find him. Wendy decided to visit the ladies' room. As soon as she entered the restroom, she called airport security. Why? Take a look at this shadow. The criminal is hiding in the second cabin. The criminal was caught and Wendy could continue her adventure. The girl checked in and went to the gate. On the plane, a handsome guy named Chuck approached her. He said that she had taken his place. Wendy showed him her boarding pass and told him that he was wrong. But Chuck kept insisting. Who's right? It's Wendy. Wendy's seat number is 16i, and the guy's boarding pass has number 19i. He just looked at the number upside down. Jessica is walking down a cold street in an abandoned city. The temperature is so low that steam is coming out of her mouth. She turns the corner and notices a cart filled with food and bottles of water. It's a real treasure, especially in a world where the entire civilization is almost completely destroyed. But as soon as the girl touches the cart, three zombies come out of the building. They're approaching Jessica, stretching out their hands toward her. She grabs the cart and runs away, but then she stops. She understands that they are not zombies, but people. How has she figured it out? All these zombies have steam coming out of their mouths. That means they're breathing and they're alive. One famous movie studio hires new staff. Lighting and sound engineers, a director of photography, a mechanic, a gaffer, prop artist, stunt performers, and an editor. But they all need to demonstrate their professional skills to get this job. The candidates have a week to make a short movie. On Monday, they start. Actors and actresses laugh and cry. Sound engineers record all their emotions. The DOP captures beautiful pictures. Stunt performers are amazing. Prop artists create a small town with incredible decorations. One week later, the studio managers are watching the movie. It's terrible. None of the candidates gets the job. Why did this happen? Why couldn't they make a good movie? There was no director among them, and no screenwriter to write a script. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about the extinction of dinosaurs. He's saying scientists are going to get the genetic code of these ancient creatures. The second friend is talking about his sister's party. There were a lot of cool people, great music, and delicious food. Other people sitting in the cafe are annoyed by the guy's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Why is one of the guys talking about dinosaurs and the other is telling him about a party? What's going on here? These two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones through headphones. It's nighttime. Three girls are standing in line at an ATM inside a bank. 
The first girl is getting some banknotes. The second one is looking around. The third girl is typing on her phone. Which one is a thief? Well, they're all robbers. The bank is closed. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says open. So the closed side is turned toward the street. Where's my cake? The chef screams. Assistants and junior cooks are running around the kitchen. A steak is burning on a frying pan. The kitchen is filled with smoke. A plate falls to the floor and shatters. The chef screams again. Where's my cake? Who took it? Everyone says they've been cooking. None of them wants to admit eating the cake. The chef doesn't believe them. Who do you think stole the cake? Nobody. The cake is in the oven, see? Jack is in a cold cell. There's only bare ground under his feet. In the cell, there's one window, but it's impossible to escape through because it's located too high. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Jack has no water and no food. He needs to get out of there in two days. But he can't dig a tunnel since the walls are too thick and go deep underground. Jack will get exhausted long before he digs his way to freedom. So how can he escape? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Marty walks around an IT university building. Three people are following him and discussing something. Marty enters the Hall of Holograms. People walk inside, too. Marty sits down on a chair. As for the three people, they go on the stage, still talking. Some of them are holograms. But who? This guy has a flashing nail on his right index finger. This girl has two left hands. The girl in the middle is slightly transparent. They all seem to be holograms. But wait a minute. Take a look at Marty. He's sitting on a chair, but his body isn't touching the surface of the seat. He's not real either. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run, but his face isn't red and he isn't sweaty at all. So Rick wants to become a famous chef, but the cooking school only accepts applicants over 18. Rick's brother Jeff is twice older than Rick. Rick's sister Ruth is twice younger than Jeff. She turned 18 this year. So, Sherlock, can Rick apply for his dream school this year? Yep, he's 18 years old. Rick and Ruth are of the same age because they're twins. Rick has prepared all papers for the cooking school, but he still needs to get some work experience and recommendations to get accepted. He found three job ads. Bill has a small diner on the fourth floor of the local shopping mall. He needs help in the kitchen. Holly offers a part-time internship at her fancy sushi restaurant. But first, you need to pay $300 for a two-week training. Sam needs an assistant in his noodle shop. Now, only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you tell which one? Hmm, 
There's no fourth floor in this shopping mall. Holly's picture is hanging on the window of the restaurant, and it says scammer. So Rick should choose Sam. Sam liked Rick's skills and CV, but he wanted to test his intelligence before hiring him. That's why he gave Rick this list of ingredients and asked him to bring them from the pantry of the cafe. Unfortunately, Sam coded this list. Can you help Rick find all the products? Here's the first ingredient. I always try to catch up with my buddy Mustard. What am I? Have you guessed? It's ketchup. Here's the next one. My closest friend is peanut butter. What am I? The second ingredient is jelly. I'm a nut that is only delicious when fried or baked. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a donut. I am a bird, I am a fruit, and I am a person at the same time. What am I? A kiwi. I go along with most veggies and snacks beside me. What am I? I'm a dip. (laughs) It's nothing personal. I'm a cup that doesn't hold any water. What am I? I'm talking about a cupcake here. A little pool with two layers of water around it. One is white and soft, and the other is dark and hard amidst a light brown grassy lawn with an outline of green grass. What's that all about? It's a coconut. It's hard to get a smooth bite, and you can chew me for a long time if I'm too dry. What am I? And the correct answer is jerky. I'm a green veggie that looks like a tiny tree. What am I? Can you guess? I'm broccoli. A time when they're green, a time when they're brown. But both of these times cause me to frown. But just in between, for a very short while, they're perfect in yellow and cause me to smile. What are they? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it's all about grapes. People confuse me with a vegetable but I'm actually a fruit. I'm red when I'm ripe, and I'm sliced and served on burgers. What am I? A tomato or tomato. I'm the type of room you cannot enter or leave. I raise from the ground below. I can be poisonous or a delicious treat. What am I? Can you guess? All of this is about a mushroom. You throw away my outside and you cook my inside. Then you eat me from the outside and throw away what's inside. What am I? The correct answer is corn. I'm the kind of food that mummies like to eat. What am I? It's a wrap. Oh, really? Time for the final ingredient. I wear a red coat and have a stone inside my throat. Who am I?
I'm a cherry! Hey, great job! Rick has brought all the ingredients. Sam hired him right away and asked him to take orders. Rick saw three customers in the cafe, but only one of them was a real human. Can you spot who exactly it was? This woman has gills just like a fish. She's a mermaid. And this guy is wearing trousers instead of a shirt, and he's trying to pay with shells. It's pretty clear he's not from this planet. Someone had stolen a tip box from Sam's Cafe. The police arrived almost at once. Rick said that he could only see the back of the robber. He knew it was a woman. The next day, another robbery took place. But this time, the guard managed to block the exit. The police arrived in a minute. They saw four women in the cafe. Can you tell who the thief was? It was Pam. She's the only one whose shoes are good enough for running. The police nearly arrested Pam, but she managed to escape. Rick ran after her and noticed she snuck into a school. Rick followed her. He noticed Pam's hoodie by one of the doors, so he entered the classroom. Rick faced four ladies who looked like Pam. Can you help him find the real Pam? There she is. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Two months later, Sam gave Rick a good recommendation. Rick applied for cooking school. And now, he has to take some exams. Rick's current task is to cook a delicious soup. Three pretty ladies are taking the same test with him. He liked them equally, but only one of them was trustworthy. Can you tell which one? Jenny has a bottle of poison in her spices collection. Fiona put pushpins in her soup. It's very suspicious as well. Kelly didn't do anything wrong. She looks pretty reliable. After the soup test, Rick got a new task. He must tell which cupcake is in the very center of the tray. Can you help him? It's the pink one. The king of one country was holding a feast where he invited all his friends. Guests gathered in the great hall. But before the celebration began, one of the courtiers informed the king that all the drinks were poisoned. The king said nothing and offered everyone to raise a toast to the new millennium. All the guests got up and raised their glasses. That's when the king noticed the villain who had been trying to poison him and other guests. Who is it? The guy over there is holding an empty glass. He knows the drinks are poison, so he hasn't poured anything in his glass. Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. The burglar hid the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer. If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who is dreaming right now? Almost all the students are writing the formulas down on their laptops. Except for that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. 
Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. All people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy. He's sweating because he's been running. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. So how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now, she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. The best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. Johnny is going through his bills. $50 for electricity, $39 for water, $70 for a bag, $448 for a new phone, $52 for dinner at a restaurant, $589 for a computer, $637 for a room in an expensive hotel. He has received a $978 bonus at work. But he also needs to buy a new fridge for his mom, and it costs $798. John has to leave soon, but he wants to know how much money he'll need. How can he calculate it quickly? He should use the calculator app on his phone. The simplest answer is often the right one. 
Detective Anderson investigates the case of missing purebred puppies. He has a list of three suspects. He visits each of them. The first suspect is a young girl. She says she spent the previous day with her friends. And she's also allergic to dogs. The second suspect is an elderly man. He says he hasn't left the house for the last few days. The third one is a famous video blogger. She says she was making YouTube videos all day. Which of them is lying? The first girl. She says she's allergic to dogs, but there's a bowl and some dog food in her kitchen. Guys arrived at the local hospital to film an interview with a famous professor, Dr. Thompson. But first, he had to help four people. Kyle complained, I'm misophonic. I wash my hands a hundred times a day. Kelly explained, I'm afraid of heights. I can't even ride a bike. Fred complained, I have a strong fear of water. I can't even look at a faucet. And Jenny claimed that she had claustrophobia. She always fainted in elevators. Dr. Thompson knew for sure that only one of these people told the truth. Can you tell who? Fred can't be afraid of water. He has an aquarium with fish in his house. Jenny lives in a tiny van, so she can't have claustrophobia. And Kyle's apartment is too messy for someone who has a fear of dirt and germs. So it's Kelly. She sleeps on the floor, which is normal for someone with an abnormal fear of heights. Next stop, creepy caves. Zach and Peter went to see ancient ruins in the middle of the woods. Many people had disappeared there. The guys heard weird screams coming from the cave, ran toward the sound, and got lost. Suddenly, they saw three tunnels. The first tunnel was filled with fire. A hungry vampire was waiting in the second tunnel. And the third tunnel was filled with poisonous apples. Which way should they choose? The third tunnel is safe. The guys don't have to eat those apples. After their epic adventure in the cave, Zach and Peter went to the supermarket to buy some groceries. I'm guessing the apples made them hungry. Can you see a ghost in this room? Here it is! Peter and Zach found out that people had seen some zombies in this abandoned town. So they decided to make a stop there and check for themselves. The town looked empty. The guys were very disappointed. But suddenly, a crowd of hungry zombies popped out of nowhere and started chasing them. The guys ran into a hospital and locked the door. Zombies began breaking the door down. Luckily, a helicopter with a rescue team arrived quickly. It was going to land on the roof. Zach and Peter needed to get there as soon as possible. Help them find the shortest way. Here's the way. After saving the guys, the rescue team invited Peter and Zach to go skydiving together. They agreed and put on parachutes. They took this picture inside the plane right before the jump. Can you tell which of these people is in danger? This man over here. He's wearing a regular backpack instead of a parachute. The guys made a stop on the shore of a famous, mysterious lake. They went fishing. Suddenly, a mermaid jumped out of the water and dragged Zack into the lake. Peter jumped into the water to rescue his friend. Finally, he found Zack wrapped in seaweed on the rocks in the middle of the lake. Three mermaids had gathered around Zack and were singing their songs. When they noticed Peter, they said, We'll set your friend free if you guess which one of us is not a real mermaid. Can you help the guy? Mm, This lady over there, her tail isn't real. Sometime later, Peter's aunt, Sarah, called them. She was very upset. She found out that she had left her diamond ring in the guy's trailer. Hmm. Peter found the ring and said, no worries, we're going to send it back to you. But there was a problem. If he sent it by post without locking the box, the ring would be stolen. Both Peter and Sarah had some locks, but neither of them had the key that would open the lock of the other. Still, they managed to make it work, and Sarah got her ring back. How did they do it? (laughs) 
Peter locked the box with the ring and sent it to Sarah. When Sarah received the box, she added her lock and sent it back. Peter received the box and removed his lock. Then he sent the box back to Sarah. She opened the lock with her key and got the ring. Man, these folks lead complicated lives, don't you think? In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Rellum came back home after a long day at the club. Her three daughters had been staying at home. The woman asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd gone shopping for a new board game and then spent the day playing it with her friends. Elle said that she had been partying with her classmates in the pool. Ava said that she had been binge-watching TV shows all day and eating ice cream. Mrs. Rellum could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the board game she bought is unpacked. She couldn't be playing it. Four friends were driving to New York City for the weekend. The music in the car was on and everyone was in a good mood, so the driver got distracted and got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started an investigation. He asked the guys who had been driving, but no one wanted to take the blame. Then the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who was driving? Look, there is a purse hanging on the driver's seat. It must belong to a girl. There's just one girl in the group, so she's likely to be the driver. Mrs. Miller came back home after work and asked what her daughters had been doing all day. They were all grounded and weren't allowed to leave the house or watch TV. Kaylee said that she had been doing housework and had just finished cooking pizza for dinner. Ellery said that she had been upstairs in her room reading. Lilith said that she'd spent the day cleaning her room. Who's lying? It's Kaylee. She said that she had made this pizza herself. But why is there a pizza box in the garbage? She ordered the pizza and was probably doing something else instead. It was a cold fall day. Mr. Jones was at home drinking tea and reading his newspaper. He also peeked out of the window from time to time. There, four teens, Mark, Davin, Bexley, and Penny were having a picnic. Suddenly, a ball broke the window of his living room. The teens started to pack their things. They didn't want to confess who had done this. In the evening, Mr. Jones got a note, but inside, there was just a question mark. Do you know who broke the window? The question mark is a hint. It literally means question mark. So Mark must be the one who did it. Adele found her friend Oliver on the floor of his studio in the attic. She called the police. The officer who came asked the girl to tell him what had happened. Adele said that she had been walking past Oliver's house and noticed that the lights had been on. She came up to the window, peeked inside, and saw him on the floor. She called the police and ran into the house. The police didn't believe her. Do you? No, it doesn't sound right. The guy was in the attic. Adele couldn't possibly see him through the window, unless she was 20 feet tall. On Wednesday, a high school student, Layla, went missing. There are three suspects. Mrs. Adams, the director. Mrs. Smith, a school cook and Mr. Jones, a cleaning man. Mrs. Adams said that she had a lot of work and spent the whole day in her office, never leaving it. Mrs. Smith said that after the working day, she had to stay in the kitchen to do some cleaning before the weekend. Mr. Jones said that he'd left after classes to do some shopping. He only returned several hours later. Who is guilty? There's something suspicious about Mrs. Smith, the cook. 
It's Wednesday, so what weekend cleaning is she talking about? Alan was traveling from Madrid to Amsterdam. But when his train arrived at the station, he wasn't there. His friend reported his disappearance. The police found some traces just a couple of hundred miles away from Madrid. First, they saw Alan's footsteps, and a bit further away from there, his suitcase was found. Then they interrogated the man who was the last to see Alan. He said that Alan hadn't had a train ticket. So when he saw the conductor coming, he threw his suitcase and then jumped from the train himself. Do you believe this man? If it were true, the police would have first found the suitcase and then Alan's footsteps. But in this case, we can conclude that the guy didn't jump himself. He was pushed off the train. The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. He was in a panic. Someone has attacked our chef! He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. Our rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business. When the police officers came to the restaurant, they learned that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police his vision had been blurred because of the tears, and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimps when the accident happened. He said he had been listening to music through his earphones, and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. Come on, shrimps in a vegan restaurant? Really? Wolf Paradox Three wolves were walking in the snow in a line. One of them says, there are no wolves in front of me. Another says, there's one wolf in front of me and one behind. The third wolf says, there are two wolves in front of me and one behind. In which case is it possible? It's possible only if the third wolf's lying. Puppy mystery Emily had a puppy she loved to the moon and back. But those around her couldn't stand the adorable pooch. Emily's husband hated how much time his wife spent with the dog. Her friend Deborah didn't like that every time she visited Emily, she had fur on her clothes. And the family maid just wasn't a fan of animals. One day, Emily came home and didn't find her puppy. The woman was furious. Her husband told her he had just come back from work and knew nothing about the dog. Her friend got offended. I left my scarf here last evening. I've come to pick it up. The maid claimed she hadn't even come close to the pup because of her allergy. Who knows where the pooch is? There's pet hair all over the floor. Why doesn't the maid have an allergy to it? She's lying. Truth or not? Eric, a police detective, was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was gone. The detective saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car. The detective told the man to give him his gadget back. But the man seemed confused. I know nothing about your phone. I just gave my friends a lift to work. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car was a sports convertible with just two seats. The car wouldn't have fit three men. Who went out? In the middle of the night, Dennis was woken up by a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out. Ah, But they know they aren't allowed to leave after curfew. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Theft on a train Brenda was traveling by train. 
It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Boy, I'm surprised. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up. But now, they covered her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Underwater fire A sailor got a letter from his girlfriend. In this message, she told him she'd cheated on him. The man was so furious, he managed to burn the letter under the water. After doing it, he got arrested. How is it all possible? The man was a sailor on a submarine. A New Year Party Emma was giving a New Year party. Everyone was having the time of their lives. But then, someone snuck into the kitchen and added something to all the drinks. Emma and all her guests got food poisoning. Only three guys were okay. They hadn't been drinking anything, and it looked suspicious. The first said he was into sports and had to stay fresh for his morning run. The second guy blushed but admitted that he liked Emma. He had been waiting for an opportunity to talk to her for the entire evening. And the third guy complained he had been having a stomach ache since the beginning of the party. He didn't want to make it worse by drinking anything. Who poisoned the drinks? It was the second guy. He has shoe covers on. He was wearing them not to leave footprints on the kitchen floor. A year passes and you've managed to get out of the basement. But to make it out of the house, you must pick one of the three doors the scientist created. The first room is filled with venomous cone snails. The second has five very hungry polar bears. The third is a saltwater tank with hundreds of piranhas. Which is the safest? The third room. Piranhas are freshwater fish and can't survive in salt water. Three prisoners are sitting at the table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and the shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's rich, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Rich people try to keep low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. A group of researchers is trying to test your knowledge. They take you into their lab on an island in Italy and present three dishes to you, but only one is safe to eat. Which do you choose? Cheese infested by maggots, boiled pufferfish liver, or fly agaric mushrooms. Pufferfish liver can be poisonous if it isn't prepared properly, and the fly agaric mushrooms are among the most dangerous in the world. Maggot cheese, on the other hand, is actually a delicacy in Sardinia, Italy so it's perfectly safe to eat. Really? One day, you wake up in an arena without knowing how you got there. From the speakers, you hear that you must fight one of three hybrid animals. Which one do you pick to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a rattlesnake, a hippo with a lion head, or a hybrid with the face and body of a great white shark and the limbs of a jaguar? The great white shark hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe outside water. You're an astronaut, and you've made it to Mars for an expedition. 
a team member greets you at the entrance to the base in their workout clothes. When you get in, you close the door and wait for the room to pressurize before taking off your spacesuit. When you walk in, you get a message that someone at the base is an imposter. Who could it be? A fellow astronaut who covers his face because he got a sunburn, an engineer with flaky patches on her skin, or the person who greeted you at the door earlier. The person you saw earlier. If they were human, they wouldn't survive outside the base in the planet's atmosphere. While walking in the forest, you come across a mysterious local that blocks your way. He tells you if you solve his riddle, you're free to go. But if you don't, you'll have to stay in this forest forever. The riddle goes like this. Your seas without water, coasts without land, towns without people, and mountains without land. What are you? Well, you're a map. You decided to go exploring a local cave. You walk inside, and a landslide suddenly blocks the way back. Ahead, there are four tunnels, each with a sign showing you which dangers lurk inside. Which one do you choose to stay safe? The tunnel filled with molten lava, the one filled with poisonous gas, the one swarmed by bats, or the tunnel with venomous spiders. You pick the last one. Spiders don't hunt humans for food and usually avoid them altogether. You just moved into a new town with only two barbers. You visit both their shops to decide which one you should pick. The first shop is a bit messy, and the barber needs both a haircut and his beard trimmed. The second shop is shiny, tidy, and the barber is well shaved with a perfect haircut. But you decide to go to the first shop. Why? Each barber cuts the other barber's hair and you pick the one who gave the other a nice haircut. You've got a job as a helper to someone's mansion. But the mansion owner gives a tricky task. I need the least number of chairs for a table to seat four fathers and two grandfathers with four sons. You can't ask any questions, but what's the least number of chairs you must put out? Four. The fathers could also be grandfathers, and they're all sons. Mary was selling a rope for $3. The buyer gave her $10, but because she had no change, she went to the grocery store next door to get some. She then returned with $7, but then the clerk from the store came outside to tell her that she gave her a counterfeit bill. Mary called a detective, and she must tell him how much she had lost. What should her answer be? $7 and the rope.